Great. Great. Hey, guys. It's Wednesday. Welcome to Real Simple Cooking School. I'm your teacher and host, Dawn. Um, let's get right to it. We're making one pot pasta today. Um, you know we like to keep it simple. We've made pasta here before in sort of like a different method, my preferred method. But I got to thinking, like, why wash another dish? And so I wanted to try this method. My friend Nora Singley, um, when she was at Martha Stewart, our sisters at Martha, hey, guys. Um, she developed this recipe, everything happens in one pot. The noodles, the sauce, the seasoning, everything. So we're going to try the same method with different stuff. The cool thing about the method is once you get the hang of it, you can uh, customize it um, depending on the season, your preferences, that kind of thing. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and keep the energy up, up, up. Um, let's go over the rules real quick. One, we wash our hands. Two, we play nice. Please stay chill in the chat. If you don't have anything nice to say, go bark up someone else's page. Um, we're just trying to have a good time here, and it's a constructive teaching kitchen. I aim to keep it that way. Um, those of you in the Facebook group, amazing. You guys are really kicking up the storm. It pleases me so. You're doing great. Um, keep up the great work. I'm really, really, really happy, and I really mean that sincerely. Okay, let's get right to it. So here's the deal. What this kind of is is cooking pasta like rice. So instead of cooking the pasta in like a lot of boiling salted water, we're gonna cook it in what we hope is just enough boiling salted water. Okay, so you just combine all the stuff to begin with. I'm gonna use Campanelli today. They're these little like uh, trumpety kind of shapes with roughly edges. I like them. You can use really any shape that you like. One thing to keep in mind, though, is depending on what you're adding to the pasta, you kind of want to think um, like to like. So I'm actually going to chop this asparagus. I've got some peas here, so small pieces to small noodle. If you have like more of a creamy sauce or like tomato sauce even, um, I would go with maybe like a longer strand. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It might be a little more work if you had a long noodle to stab your asparagus and your peas, but have fun with it. It's not a big deal. Okay. So I'm only going to use 12 ounces of pasta. I know it's a little bit annoying, but I will say that I often find myself at home cooking for one, and that four ounces of pasta, great to have left over. So 12 ounces, I'm not going to weigh it, I'm just going to eyeball it. That feels about right. I mean, if I was being really saucy, I'd weigh that and see how close it was. But I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, 12 ounces of pasta four and a half cups of water. Now, in an ideal scenario, which we hope this is, the pasta will absorb almost all of the water by the time it's perfectly cooked. We'll add a few other things to the pot, um, and those will cook in the residual liquid. But if there's too much water, you just drain it, and it's not a big deal, okay? So we'll start with four cups. I'll come back for a half cup. Now I'm using the big Dutch oven. We've talked about this guy. He's a Le Creuset enamel pot. Great investment. They, they're not cheap, but if you treat it right, you'll have it forever. I've never seen one of these break. Um, I think the only thing you could do to make it tough is like forget about caramel or something, scorch of the day, we like to call it. Um, but otherwise, you'll have one of these forever. Um, so if you've got a wedding coming up, a big birthday, um, or just like generous in-laws, just casually mention that the Lake Rosé is what you want. I like this size. I believe this is 10 quarts, I'm guessing. David, do you know how big this is? 10? Yeah, 10 to 12 is a good range. You can cook pasta in it. You could braise chicken in it. You could put a whole chicken in it. Um, but this is a great size. I'm going to put in a couple tablespoons of olive oil. I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of salt. Now remember, if I was doing this the way I usually do it, I'd fill this way up with water. Not way up, but like three quarters. Bring it to a boil. I put plenty of salt in there so it tastes salty. Remember, that's the only way the noodle gets seasoned inside. Otherwise, the flavor is just on the outside. It'll be fine, just less delicious. So about a tablespoon. I'm familiar with the tablespoon, so I know it's about that much for my fingers, but you can measure it. Not a big deal. Uh, okay, several grinds of pepper. And so 
some other aromatics. In this case, I'm going to use a little garlic and a little shallot. You could use onion, you could use leeks, you could even use scallion. The reason I'm going to add these now is because I want them to soften. Typically, if I were doing this um, in my usual method, I'd saute this stuff in a skillet on the side. Also totally fine. We're just going to try and keep this to one pot. Um, so these aren't going to have a chance to soften when I add my quicker cooking ingredients, my spring asparagus, my peas. So I want to add them a little earlier on so they have a chance to cook, to, to cook out that raw bite. Any questions so far? Talking about pot pasta. That's a great question. Would the recipe work with gluten-free pasta? Here's the thing about gluten-free pasta. One, I've never made uh, this type of recipe with gluten-free pasta, but I'll say this. Gluten-free noodles behave very differently than your traditional like semolina or wheat noodle. That's because they don't have the same starch that these type of noodle have. So when I typically do it, you, when I typically am cooking pasta, you cook the noodles, you reserve some of the starchy pasta water, and you add that to your sauce. As that reduces, it thickens all the business that's already in the skillet. So oftentimes, you'll get an amazing pasta out, and you'll be like, oh my gosh, this must have like cream or tons of butter. It's often just like an effective use of the pasta water. Gluten-free noodles, they just don't behave the same. So um, they would work in this method, but don't expect them to be like, to get thick and creamy the way that these will. Um, and it's, ju it's just like the nature, the nature of the noodle and the nature of the grains that they usually use. Um, I find that as far as gluten-free pastas go, the corn-based pastas, I think they tend to hold up better. Um, gluten-free noodles made with other stuff, they just tend to fall apart in the water. But if you guys have um, gluten-free pastas that you really like, Go ahead and drop them in the comments. I'm sure people would love to hear um, what's good out there. Other questions, Brooke? Someone wants to know if it would be possible to just saute the salad and garlic and oil before adding to the pasta. Yeah, you could. The question is, could you saute the garlic and the shallots um, before you add them? Yeah, absolutely. But the point is to use one pot, right, guys? But yeah, if you don't mind, go ahead and saute them. Um, that is 100% an option. And you guys can see, I'm just taking the peel off. I want to slice this. It's more of an um, aesthetic choice today uh, than anything else. But that's also going to help it cook a little faster. Um, and as it cooks, it's going to mellow in flavor. Like I said, low energy live. <laughs> Just gonna keep it pretty mellow. Okay, and then I'm just gonna give it a little bit of slice. Doesn't have to be perfect. You could chop it. You could put it through a garlic press if you like. I like a garlic press. Um, Brooke, maybe you could drop the link to the OXO garlic press. If you're intimidated to chop, um, a garlic press is a great place to start. But I am going to use a microplane in a little bit. Another great option if chopping makes you nervous. This is great for chopping garlic, um, grating ginger, grating cheese, and citrus zest, which we're gonna do. Instagram, hi, how are you? I, I forgot you were there for a second. Anyway, microplane, great tool to have. Um, Brooke, maybe drop the link to that also. Inexpensive tool, you'll find you'll use it for way more than you think. Okay, I'm gonna drop the garlic right in my pot. Shallot's gonna get sliced. Again, this is more of an aesthetic choice. I'm just gonna thinly slice this. If you wanted to chop it for smaller pieces or you have, you know, like finicky eaters who are like, what's that? Um, you can chop it finer. You can also leave it out. But because you're skipping that step where you're caramelizing stuff, where you build a lot of flavor, I would, I would try it or try and sneak it in if you can. That guy's separating a little bit. You could use a yellow onion. You could use a red onion. Again, we had a lot of shallots, so I'm just trying to get through them. OK, my shallots go in. Things are happening. It's coming to a boil. And I just want to give it a little bit of a stir. 
make sure everything is kind of evenly incorporated. I can already feel the noodles starting to stick together. Regardless of how you're cooking your pasta, whether you're doing it in this kind of risotto method or in a bigger pot of boiling salted water, once you add the pasta, you always want to give it a good stir. Otherwise, as the starch starts to release from the noodles, they'll stick together. That's why like when you go to take the spaghetti out sometimes, you've got that like octopus situation where the ends are all stuck together and the legs are flying out behind it. Where's my audience? How do you determine, like you said, you put the quick cooking stuff in first or whatever. How do you know, do you have a rule of thumb for knowing what types of vegetables cook at what speed? Like is there a good rule of thumb for knowing the order to put things in or you just learn? So Sam asks, how do you know kind of what's quick cooking and what's not? Some of that is practice. Some of it is common sense. Um, Samantha, because you're here, what would cook faster, a uh, sweet potato or a green bean? Green bean. Right. Okay. What about um, butternut squash or asparagus? Butternut squash, asparagus cooks faster. Right. So you just okay. have to sometimes like take a second but, like, and think I about it. But I wouldn't guess that asparagus cooks faster than an onion or whatever well, they mean by you putting it in last. Well, part of that is because we want it to stay sort of like bright green and crisp. And the onion, we intentionally want it to mellow more. So you could, it's like think about things you can eat raw versus things you want to eat cooked. And like, do I want to eat it more cooked or less cooked? OK. OK? Great. OK, sure. OK, let's talk about asparagus. The great thing is I've got some inactive time on my hands, right, guys? Okay, this is boiling. I think it's gonna take eight to 10 minutes. I'm lucky that this watch, the big hand is on the four, so by the time we get to 1.30, this should be done, okay? So in the meantime, I'm gonna prep this veg. Oh, wait, I wanted to show you one other trick. I have a little bit of Parmesan here. One thing that you can add to this is the parm rind. Whoa, mine's are blown. This is going to soften in here, melt a little bit, and it's going to give off that delicious nutty flavor to the liquid that the noodles are cooking in. And I'm just going to keep coming back over here, checking in on things. It's going to be fine. We're going to grate this at the end. <clears throat> now, let's talk asparagus. We are on the cusp of spring, thank God, um, here in the Northeast. Asparagus, we're still not getting it locally, but it's getting closer and closer. But um, start looking for it, especially if you're from like below the Mason-Dixon or California, you should be having gorgeous asparagus right now. But I wanna show you how to trim it. So you saw I, I broke a couple pieces and see that they're like relatively the same length. So you can do that with a bunch. And this is a great way to get um, less experienced cooks to help you in the kitchen. So you just, they, asparagus has a natural break, which means when I do this, the woody end is this part. I can get rid of that. And the more tender part here. See, and generally, if, if this grew together, which generally they, they have, they'll all break about the same spot. So you can, you know, if you want to chit chat, drink some wine, like have your friends do this. If you want to get on with your life, just line up this piece and do that. Save this for vegetable stock if you like. Did you see how I left the rubber band on the top? Makes that a lot easier, it keeps it sturdy when you cut. Okay, so actually, speaking of which, I am gonna give this more of a chop. One, because I want it to cook faster, and two, it's like, this would be awkward to eat if I had long asparagus spears and my short noodles. Get it, get it? Okay, so I'm just gonna go on through. We may lose some off the board, that's no big deal. Guys, just a reminder, Brooke, I think, dropped a link to um, the little piece I wrote about this. I know a lot of you are like, where's the recipe? Where's the recipe? The recipe is in the article, which means you have to do a bit of reading, but there's so much good content packed in there. Um, the ingredients are bolded, but part of the reason I'm not giving you like a traditional recipe is because I want this to be like a liquid thing for you. I want it to just be kind of a blueprint and then I want you to feel your way through it. That is what's gonna really improve your cooking. Then we got the tops. Do whatever you like with those. They're so pretty when you leave them whole. Um, they might be like a little long for eating wise, but I'm like kind of, you know, food styling all the time. Once you do it, it's hard to go back. 
Now I'm also chopping these in, I'd say like quarter to a half inch sliced crosswise because I'm gonna add some peas also. So relatively the same size, so they cook about the same time. Okay, asparagus, good to go. Peas, I'm not gonna use all of these. Um, I'll probably use just like a handful or two. Now peas are gonna come out of the ground <laughs> soon also. Um, if you've got them, especially if you've got some time, buy the fresh things, uh, take them out of their pods. It's super fun, super meditative. If you have like a porch and a, a rocking chair, um, it's like the preferred way to do it. Um, if not, frozen peas are great. Remember there, we talked about it last week when we went over some frozen food stuff. Um, peas are, frozen peas are picked blanched, that means cooked briefly in boiling salted water, um, before they're frozen. So they're going to be like at peak, peak freshness. They're good. And you don't have to defrost them. They're going to defrost really fast in there. I, I'm going to go ahead and add my asparagus right now because it's been about five minutes. So I'm going to add my asparagus. This is a whole bunch. I mean, I could probably get away with like half of this, but it's okay. Um, another good tip if you're trying to like cut back on the amount of pasta or you know like refined carbohydrates um, bulking up the vegetables in a dish is a great way to do it one more time sam You know, so Sam asked a good question. Would this one pot pasta work if you added a meat to it? I would only add something that I had previously cooked. So if it was a chicken sausage, I might brown that on the side, slice it up and toss it in at the end. Same thing, like I could brown some pork sausage and do that. Um, otherwise, it's like boiled meat, less delicious than like brown crispy meat. Guys, we're getting kind of close. I'm gonna taste the noodle. Phil, you wanna get in here and see what's happening? So see, I, I, there's, there's some water in here, but it's happening fast. And that's why I want to keep stirring this to make sure all the noodles have a chance to get hot. Good. I'm like nervous about this. Blow on it. I actually found it perfect. It's super, super amazing, really. Um, and actually, my ratios are pretty good. Now, we're, we're closing in. Here's, here's the secret to this, to this dish. It's tasting as you go, which one could argue is the secret to good cooking, period. And that is how we sneak in an extra lesson. Uh-huh. OK, so all that means is I want to taste my noodles along the way, like I just did, so I know exactly when they're ready. Unlike my traditional pasta method, which is cook the pasta till it's a little underdone, drain it, add it to my sauce with some pasta water, and cook it till, to my liking there. Everything's happening in this pot. So I got to taste it, taste it, taste it two times, maybe three times. And when it's exactly to my liking, I'm done. OK? So that's all it is. It's sort of f for seasoned cooks, haha. -ha, um, it sort of seems silly and obvious, but it really is one of the things that will drastically improve your cooking, in addition to learning to season with confidence. Okay? Okay, guys, this is looking really good. Um, Phil, take a look in here. Natasha, maybe you can see here. See how the, the, um, the bubbles are getting smaller? It's almost trying to leave a trail. So I'm going to go ahead and like finish this real fast. Now, bonus, I'm going to add butter. You do not have to do that. I just think like this is like a super lean, fresh thing. This is going to add some richness, make it really satisfying, um, which is something we're looking for out of these super quick meals. Like, you know, fine, I could put some jarred sauce on my favorite noodle, but this is going to make it a little more satisfying. I mean, seriously, guys, I've been talking and, you know, blah, 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 and we're going to be done in a true half hour. Ooh, so that butter, now take a look. 
this sauce is like truly thickening. It's coating the noodles. That butter is making it like silky and amazing looking. And all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some cheese and some lemon zest again, just to brighten it up and some chopped chives and that's it. Do you guys have any questions? No, sweet onions, you know, I was just reading about this and I can't remember um, like the technical difference, but no, sweet onions are totally fine. If you have those, use them. Like I said, any onion will really work here. So a yellow onion, a red onion, even a white onion. Um, because here we're gonna add the onion thing early, it has time to mellow. Um, so it's not gonna bite you back. Other questions? <laughs> Guys, you know, I talk about this a lot, but I think butter, like so many foods, has, has like gotten kind of demonized. Um, one, fat is good for you, good for the skin, good for the system, keeps things moving. Um, but, you know, fat along the way got a bad rap, and, and so did butter. But if you're buying like good quality butter, um, using it in moderation, I say fine. Again, you've got to tailor this to your dietary needs. Got heart issues, whatever, like, don't listen to me. But otherwise, try it. Right. Now, okay, I've let this go like a second too long. It's starting to stick, but we're there. So I probably could have done eight minutes instead of 10. That was 10. And there you have it, you guys. What do you think? Not bad. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna finish this with a little bit of lemon zest. I love lemon with spring vegetables. I just think it really uh, wakes them up, brings out their sort of like natural lean brightness. And then the cheese. As little or as much as you like. Someone wants to know if you can add chicken broth to this recipe. Yeah, great idea. Can you add chicken broth to this recipe? Yes. That's a great idea. You could use it instead of the water. Now, that said, if you use chicken broth, go easy on the salt. Chicken broth, veggie broth, whatever you want to use is pre-seasoned. So I would say like start with, you know, a couple of pinches. You can season it later, but the, um, the pasta is going to soak up the sodium that's already in the broth. Great idea. We'll definitely add big flavor. Um, any other questions? You could add a splash of wine. White wine to the beginning. Yum. Someone wants to know what happened to the parmine. Oh, parmine, he's in here. It's kind of like the king cake at uh, Mardi Gras. It's sort of like if you find the parmine, you should like get a prize. Um, let's see if we can find one. Da, 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 da. Here's one. You can fish it out, but like it won't kill you. It's actually delicious. Um, so there's another one in there too, but no big deal. Fish it out if you like. Keep it in, serve it, just warn the kids. Any other questions before we wrap it up? Because I am on fire. And then I have to go to the dentist. But um, I think I think perhaps you didn't read carefully um, why to call the drain in the recipe. If you get to a point you like the texture of the noodle and there's still quite a bit of water, then you're gonna want to drain. You see what I mean? You're in charge of this one pot pasta, so it's up to you. Otherwise, keep it going. The whole trick is learning what you like as far as the noodle is concerned. Do you like more al dente? If you're there and there's still plenty of water, drain it. If not, keep it going. You see? I'm just giving you an option along the way. Smells really good. Smells really good. Other questions before we get out of here? So guys, homework this week, I'd love it if you made one pot pasta. It's actually so, so easy. So all you really have to remember, 12 ounces of pasta, four and a half cups of water. Tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of olive oil. But like the pasta and the water ratio, that's your, that's your main thing. I'd love it if you made one pot pasta, but just make any pasta or as you guys are doing, make whatever you want, post it in the Facebook group, join our Facebook group, cook along with us, um, don't forget to tag any Instagram photos, RS Cooking School, tag me so I can see it. Have a great week. I'll see you here next Wednesday. So long.